if you feel like your raps are coming off as sounding amateur and lacking that extra flair that's needed to really impress the listener, then it could be due to you not truly harnessing the power of rhyming. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving you five very practical but powerful tips on how you can improve your rhyme skills, which will allow you to keep that listener locked in the entire song and leave them wanting more. For example, Ladies and gentlemen, if you lend me your attention, you will be able to witness the penmanship of a magician who can achieve the impossible with a lot of his audibles. And you probably ought to be able to model the mob because he. Let's get it. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Cole Mize with ColeMizeStudios.com, or it's my main goal to help you be a better rapper now. And if you're new to my channel, before you leave today, make sure you get yourself a copy of my ebook, The Number One Fundamental to Rapping. That's my gift to you. It's totally free, and it's a tool that I created for up and coming rappers, regardless if you're just getting started or if you have a few years under your belt. It's going to help you really get a good jump start and wrap your mind around how this whole rapping thing works. It's something I really wish I would have had when I first started rapping, and it's an easy read. It's not too dense, it's something you can read within an hour or so. And I think it's really going to help you out and add a lot of value. You can get that by clicking the I at the top of the screen or at the top of the video's description below. And if this video was helpful to you, make sure you show up some love by smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Okay, before I get into the five tips, let me first lay a little groundwork to make sure that we're all on the same page. Let's first discuss briefly, what are rhymes? Okay, rhymes is simply what we call a literary device. All right, there's different types of literary devices. These are tools that we use as writers to do things that are really catchy to the listener all right and rhymes are one of those literary devices so other literary devices could be like punchlines or metaphors or similes and things of that nature so rhymes are what you would call a literary device now what rhymes are is simply the use of the same sounds and creating a pattern using the same sounds that's what we will call rhyming okay and so as simple as that, it's as simple as that. That's what rhymes are. Then we have what we call rhyme schemes. Rhyme schemes is simply a pattern that we create with our rhymes. So for an example, if we rhyme on the fourth beat of let's say bar number one, if you rhyme on the fourth beat of bar number two, you've created a rhyme scheme. That's a pattern that you've created for two bars and that's what it makes it more catchier to the listener. And it makes it easy for them to follow along with because it's a pattern. Then we have what we call internal rhymes. Internal rhymes are when you simply just rhyme within one bar, but it doesn't repeat over for another bar. So it doesn't, it's not a rhyme scheme, but you're still rhyming within that one bar and it still makes what you're saying within that one bar more catchier to the listener. Okay, tip number one is gonna be all about rhyme placement. And what I mean by that is, a lot of beginner rappers will make the mistake of not placing their rhymes in the same spot from one bar to the other bar, which makes a weak rhyme scheme. Remember, a rhyme scheme is when you rhyme the same word or sound on the same spot from one bar to another. That's what gives it a strong pattern. So typically as rappers, we'll rap a lot of times around the fourth beat as a starting point. We'll rap around the fourth beat of a bar, either right on the fourth beat or right before, like right after that fourth beat. But just around the fourth beat is a really good part. It's right, right around where that snare, that clap hits. Okay, and then we'll rhyme in that same exact spot on the next bar. If you don't do that, your pattern won't be as strong. So for example, if you rhyme on the fourth beat, but then you rhyme on the second beat of the next bar, yeah, you're rhyming technically, but you've broken your rhyme scheme as far as where your rhyme scheme is placed, and it won't have as strong of a connection. It won't be as strong of a pattern to the listener. And so this is a mistake a lot of times that's made by rappers, usually due either to a lack of ear training so they haven't they can't hear where everything is placed musically from one bar to the next bar or they're just not keeping track of it they're not really paying attention to it so i actually created a tool called bar sheets to kind of help out with this and here's what the bar sheets look like i actually made a video explaining these and how to use them and stuff like that and i'll place that video link in the video's description um but i also give these away for free when you uh, opt in to download my ebook, The Number One Fundamental to Rapping, you'll also get this as an extra free goodie just because I love to hook you guys up. So what you're seeing on the screen right here are the lyrics that you heard me rap at the very beginning of this video. All right, and I have everything 
correctly structured in the bar sheets. All right, and all the different colors you see represent the different types of rhyme schemes that I've created. All right, or just rhyming in general, because I have some internal rhymes and stuff as well. But for the placement of your rhymes, just, just focus mainly right now just on that fourth beat. All right, this, this section right here, you'll see how I go, I rhyme with Tin and Jin on Magician. I have those in the same spot right here. All right, and the same, and the same thing with Audibles and Albacas. That's a close rhyme. Again, they're in the same spot right there on the fourth beat together. This should, now there's a lot more going on here. There's a lot more. We're going to talk about some of this other stuff, but just focus on the fourth beat and listen to how those are lining up with each other. I'm just going to play back my, my recording for you. Check this out. Ladies and gentlemen, if you lend me your attention, you will be able to witness the penmanship of a magician who can achieve the impossible with the lot of the Zodibles. And you probably ought to be able to model them all because he's... All right, the reason that's sounding so good is because these are structured musically in time. So they're landing within the same section, the same beat from bar to bar. And that's what makes them sound so tight. That's one thing that holds a lot of people's rhyme schemes back. Um, if they're not structuring this stuff correctly, it's going to sound sloppy and it's not going to be tight. And while we're talking about placement of rhyme schemes, you also want to keep your rhyme schemes going for like an even number of bars. All right, this is very important. So for an example, keep your rhyme scheme going for like two bars or four bars or six bars or eight bars. Do it like in an even number. Don't do it for like three bars or like five bars or seven bars because it's gonna most likely sound incomplete. And if you wanna go deeper into that, make sure you watch my video called the four bar theory. I break all that stuff down, but just to keep it simple, if you want things to sound complete in music, do them in even numbers. I'll just say that. Keep it simple, okay? Okay, tip number two is all about rhyming frequency. All right? So typically most beginner rappers will not do a whole lot of rhyming. They'll just rhyme like maybe once per bar. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to take your rhyming skills to the next level, you need to try to rhyme more than that. So for an example, a lot of people will just rhyme, let's say one syllable. Okay. And that's what it'll give it kind of like that Dr. Seuss type of sound, like cat, hat, you know, stuck truck. If you're always just rhyming one syllable, you're going to sound very basic. All right. There's nothing wrong with that as a starting point, but you want to build off from that. And as rappers, what rappers have done throughout the years of rapping is we have really pushed the boundaries of like, the possibilities when it comes to like rhyming. We've taken rhyming to a whole other level. And the more rhyming typically the better <laughs> in a lot of cases. And that's what makes our stuff sound so catchy and so impressive to the listener. So you wanna try to rhyme more frequently. So like using multi-syllables, um, using bigger words to rhyme. You know, like for an example, you can use a, a, a bigger word like procrastinate, okay? And then you could use multiple words to rhyme with that. It's like so fast to hate, procrastinate. You know, people are so fast to hate when you procrastinate. All right. That's more impressive than, you know, I bought a hat for my cat. Okay. So multisyllables is a great way to really take the rhyming up to another level. And again, that, in that example, I used a bigger word and use multiple smaller words. That's one way that you can achieve more rhyming is you don't have to pick another word that's the same size. You can use multiple smaller words to rhyme with a larger word. Not only that, you don't only have to create one, one rhyme scheme per bar. You can create multiple rhyme schemes within a bar um, or do internal rhyming along with rhyme schemes. Again, remember internal rhymes are only rhymes that occur within one bar and don't carry over to the next bar. Um, so. Taking a look here at the bar sheets as well. Again, everything that you see in red uh, is or different colors represent different rhyme schemes. Okay, so you see the red going on, you see some green, you see some yellow, and you see some purple. Check this out. So just focus on the red. All right, those are all my end sounds. All right, so Jin, Lin, Tin, Pin, Min, and then Shin. Listen to all those sounds real quick. Just pay attention to those sounds. Look how, look how busy it is. Ladies and gentlemen, if you lend me your attention, you will be able to witness the penmanship of a magician who can... All right, that's a lot of end sounds, right? But I also have other... So, so within that first bar, notice on bar two and three, 
Jin and Pin are close to each other. They're both on the second beat. They're not exactly in the same spot. Lin, I'm not doing anything on the third beat with Lin. Uh, so you can call that an internal rhyme, like Jin and Lin are like an internal rhymes that are supporting the fourth beat uh, rhyme on Tin. Tin and Jin on Magician, they're in the same exact spot with each other. All right, so we have the rhyme scheme going, but I also have an internal rhyme going. This rhyming with the same rhyme scheme, but it's internal. It's not necessarily carrying over on both parts right there on the second, third beat to the, to the following bar. So you're seeing a combination of a rhyme scheme and some internal rhyming going on there. And then we have the green, right? Wit, ship, jit, the i sounds. Focus on that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you lend me your attention, you will be able to witness the penmanship of a magician. Hear that? The it sound. Ladies and gentlemen, if you lend me your attention, you will be able to witness the penmanship of a magician. Who so, and again, here, it's not even just rhyming whole words. It's, you can be, you can create rhymes out of pieces of words, like in, like multi-syllable words. Like in this case, it has the it sound. So like the beginning of witness and the end of ship on pim and ship, witness the pim and ship. And I'm putting more emphasis on those to really make them pop out and almost be like 3D to really stick out to the listener and say, hey, I'm rhyming. <laughs> Let's, look at me. I'm rhyming. So wit, ship, jit. Those are popping out. Listen to the emphasis I'm putting on those to really make them obvious to you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you lend me your attention, you will be able to witness the penmanship of a magician. Here, I'm making those pop out. Okay. And then in the yellow right there, that's like a really quick internal rhyme of a uh, ma. It's the uh sounds uh. Uh, uh, ma, listen to that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you lend me your attention, you will be able to witness the penmanship of a magician. It's really quick. It's, I mean, you probably won't even notice it. It's not a big part of the rhyme scheme, but it technically it's like an internal rhyme of a uh, ma. All right. And then all the purple you see there is, is my next rhyme scheme. Keep in mind, see, there's a lot of red for the first two bars. And then you see a lot of purple for the next two bars because I've, I've transitioned into another rhyme scheme. Okay. Remember I said, keep things in even numbers. I got I got two bars of rhyming going on there with the with a lot of the red with some other stuff and then I go a lot of purple on this one. So possible, lot of it, audibles, probable, auto, model, all because. Check that out. Just listen to the purple. Ladies and gentlemen, if you lend me your attention, you will be able to witness the penmanship of a magician who can achieve the impossible with a lot of his audibles. And you probably ought to be able to model them all because he all right, so there's a lot of ada, but ada, but ada. All right, sounds going on there. So this just demonstrates to you like frequency of rhyming. This is what takes it to a whole other level. And this is a pretty extreme example. You don't have to be rhyming this much to improve your rhyme schemes. This is a really extreme example of rhyming a whole lot. I won't rhyme this much on every song. You know, this different songs, you'll have different um, things that you're going after. And for this particular verse I wrote, it was really showcasing like how dense of a rhyme scheme I can create. But you don't have to always rhyme this, like this much. This is just an extreme example of it. And see, another thing about frequency of rhyming, the more frequently you rhyme, the more aggressive a lot of times you'll sound. So you hear how aggressive I sound when I'm rapping this, right? This is something that like, let's say you wanted to create a dynamic build throughout a verse. You can start off rhyming less, and then you begin rhyming a little bit more and a little bit more as the verse goes along if you want to create more aggressiveness, all right? So that's another thing that can be attributed to really dense rhyme schemes. But again, the main takeaway here is if you want to improve your rhyme, the way that your rhymes sound, focus on trying to rhyme more often, okay? Using multi-syllable rhymes and also use internal rhymes or even use multiple rhyme schemes. For an example, you could have one rhyme scheme on beat four of each bar and then you could have a, a totally different word that you're rhyming on beat two of each bar for a rhyme scheme. All right, the third tip to improving your rhyme schemes is going to come back to something you hear me talk a lot about on this channel if you're a follower of mine, and that's scatting. Scatting is not just for helping you improve your rap flow. It can also be a way for you to build a rhyme scheme up before you know all the words that you're going to use. So. For an example, I do this all the time. When I'm scatting, I'm not just playing around with flow. I'm also playing around with rhyme schemes, okay? Because remember, with scatting, we're just mumbling gibberish. We're mumbling sounds. So you can use the same sounds 
from one bar to the other to go ahead and kind of get a feel for like how you may want your rhyme scheme to kind of go. So one practical way of doing that is just pick a word. Um, and, and word selection is important because w different words feel differently. All right. So being able to audition different words before you commit to a rhyme scheme is important. You know, some words you can rhyme a lot more than other words and some words just sound good, man. Like and, and other ones may not sound as good. And, um, so just pick a word. So for an example, let's say the word procrastination. Okay. I'm just going to use the word procrastination. And as a starting point, I'm going to put that around the fourth beat. All right. And then I'm going to just play around and continue scatting using similar sounds with procrastination. Let's check it out real quick. I finna cast on the wrath of procrastination. Patamation, but tap a rate of an adoration. I'm blast when the cast when the matamation. If you wanna cap it, the rapid stop on the matilation. I'm blast when the blast for procrastination. Blast when the grass of my nana patient. I'm past the raging upon the matter patient. If you wanna cap on the rapid stop on the patilation. There you go. Tip number four is all about context. Now, when you're rhyming, rhyming is fun. It can be addictive. It's like a game we play as rappers where it's like the more we rhyme, the better. You know, a lot of times we want to see how much we can rhyme. But you can also rhyme too much or put too much focus on rhyming, I should say. And what I mean by that is this. Don't rhyme simply for the sake of rhyming. All right, there's more things going on with your rapping than just rhyming. Remember, rhyming is one technique that we're using to make our stuff sound catchy. But another thing that's really important, and I would argue maybe the most important, is what you're saying. So if you think of like a, a pyramid, for an example, and what's at the top is like the most important, and what's at the bottom is like the least important, I would probably put at the top the message. What you're actually saying is like most important. And all this other stuff we're doing, rhyme schemes, cadence and flow and delivery and all this cool stuff, all of that is actually tools and techniques that we're using to make our message the utmost effective to the listener. That's the whole point of all of it is to captivate the, the audience, the listener and tune them in, lock them into you so you can say what you want to say to them. Okay. So I feel like the message is the most important. So never lose sight of that. As you're rhyming, we want to rhyme as much as we possibly can, but not at, at the expense of losing what you're trying to say. So that means there may be some times where, yeah, you got another word that you can rhyme, but it doesn't really make sense in context with what you're saying. So that may mean that you just got to let that, that particular extra rhyme go. Okay. Or it may mean that maybe you just need to choose a completely different rhyme scheme altogether. Maybe that, that, that word that you chose to rhyme with, maybe you don't really have a lot to, to rhyme with, with that particular word that would also support what you're saying. So sometimes, sometimes we may, Let's say we, we, we commit to a rhyme and then now we're on the second bar trying to rhyme with that word. And we just realize, man, I don't have a whole lot that I can rhyme with that will work and still make sense with what I'm saying. Then you may need to go back to that first bar and just change the word to something else. And that may open up a lot more possibilities for you. So context is so important. Don't lose sight of that. As they say, we can get so zoomed in sometimes where we can no longer see the forest from the trees. So it's good to zoom out and look at the total picture to try to regain clarity of what's actually going on. Okay. Tip number five is all about building up your arsenal. All right. So the more words that you know, the more words you have at your disposal to use when you're rhyming, which gives you a lot more possibilities, not just for rhyming, but for the possibilities of how you can articulate your message to the listener. And so if your vocabulary is somewhat limited, then you're going to be somewhat limited to how you can rhyme. Okay. It's very, it's the same exact thing that I teach when it comes to the cadences and why I recommend scatting and learning a lot of different cadences. It's going to make your flow so much more diverse. The same thing is true when it comes to rhyming. The more words, you know, the more fluent, the more, the more diverse your word selection is going to be. So you're not going to be using the same words over and over and over again. You got a lot more different words you can choose from, which gives you so many more possibilities. So one way that you can, one easy way you can expand your vocabulary is get into the habit of when you're listening to like a podcast or if you're reading a book or reading the news, you know, articles, whatever, if you hear somebody use a word that you don't know, get you some type of app, 
right? Or just, you don't have to, you know, whatever. Just go to like a dictionary. I use an app called Dictionary. And anytime I hear a word, I go in here, I type it up, I read it, and then I'll save it. I can create like a list. Like I use a dictionary app to create a list. And right now I probably had like 40 or 50 words that I'm trying to remember. And um, it just creates you a list out of those and and kind of create a list of words that you want to use. So like the next time you're, you're going to write a song, you may just pull up that list and say, okay, this is a word I want to try to work in, in my new rhyme or whatever. And in addition to using a dictionary to expand your vocabulary, also feel free to use a rhyming dictionary. Um, I just reviewed the best rhyming dictionary I've ever came across uh, called Rhyme Wave. I reviewed that recently, but use a tool like that. That can also help give you some more ideas for words that you may not use on a regular basis or just help speed up the rhyming process. Because sometimes when we're trying to think of words that, that we're trying to rhyme with, that can really hold our creative process up and we can kind of lose momentum and, and lose that creative drive. So like having a dictionary, is a good tool to use while you're writing rhymes, but also like a rhyme and dictionary can also aid in that as well and give you that extra support. All right, and here's a bonus tip for you. One more really, really powerful technique you can use when it comes to rhyming is by actually manipulating the way you say a word. We do this all the time as rappers. So I'll give you one example of that comes to mind. So the word orange, right? Um, this, is one, <laughs> this is something I heard Eminem talk about. Orange is one of those words, but there's not a whole lot of words that you can rhyme with the word orange. And Eminem was talking about this and how he was he gets obsessed over words. Like he'll just pick a word and get fixated on that. And he's trying to think of like all the different ways he can rhyme with that. And orange was something he was struggling with. And so what he did was just manipulate the way that you would pronounce it. Um, and he started, he would say instead of orange, he said orange, orange. So if you do orange, then you could rhyme it with like syringe. So this is a technique you can use with lots of different words. Um, it's something we do all the time, not even from a rhyming perspective, but more from a timing perspective and getting our lyrics to fit a cadence and stuff like that. We'll manipulate how long words are. So for an example, like the word, uh, like a lot of words that have G on it, like let's say striking, right? Well, a lot of times we'll shave the G off of words to make it shorter. Like instead of saying striking, we'll say striking, right? Just Take that G off and just keep the N on it. And that's one way we can manipulate a word to make it smaller. In this case, we can manipulate words also to make them rhyme closer to, to a rhyme scheme that we have going. So feel free to play around with manipulation of words. Um, it can be, be a really cool tool to really open up a lot more opportunities uh, for rhyming. So let's do a quick recap. Tip number one, focus on the placement of your rhyme schemes. Make sure they're in the same spot from one bar to the next. Use a tool like the bar sheets if you need to, to help you keep track of that and keep your rhyme schemes for even numbers, such as two bars, four bars, six bars, eight bars, etc. Tip number two, increase the frequency that you're rhyming. Don't just rhyme one syllable from one bar to the next. Try to rhyme multi-syllables. Try to create multiple rhyme schemes or try to incorporate internal rhymes with your rhyme scheme. This will allow yourself to sound a lot more catchy and more impressive to the listener. Tip number three, scatting. Use scatting to audition a word that you're thinking about rhyming with, and it'll give you ideas of different ways you could possibly create a rhyme scheme out of that by just scatting alone. Tip number four, context. Don't lose sight of what you're saying. Don't rhyme simply for the sake of rhyming. Make sure that your rhymes are actually supporting what you're actually trying to say in the song. Tip number five, build up your arsenal. Always be learning new words. Create a list, keep those lists before you. And when you go to write your next verse or your next song, feel free to pull up that list and see if any of the words that you've been trying to learn could be possibly used in your new song or verse. And the bonus tip, feel free to manipulate words, change the way you would normally say them to open up more rhyming possibilities. So there you go. Those are some practical ways that you can begin improving your rhyming skills right now. Let me know in the comment section below which one of these you feel like is your weakest point. Which one of these are you going to be trying to focus on improving the most? And again, if you're new to my channel, make sure you get yourself a copy of my ebook, The Number One Fundamental to Rapping. You can click the I over there or at the top of the video description below. And you'll also get a copy of the bar sheets that you see me use today in the video. Again, my name is Cole Mize or ColeMizeStudios.com. I hope this video was helpful. And always remember, when it comes to rapping, there's no rules. There's only techniques. Peace. Hey,
Listen, man, you see that subscribe button right there? Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. Oh, and don't forget the bell icon. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. Hey, I know you see that like button, right? Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. And look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself today I'm gonna kill it, kill it.